Welcome back everybody to Forza Horizon 4 and we're doing another seasonal championship, this time beginner's truck which is off-road vehicles in C-Class and uh, yeah, we're getting there in this GMC Typhoon which again is one of my favourite cars of the moment and uh, yeah C-Class off-road cars, there aren't many, I think there's about six to choose from but there are a decent variety of them yeah, nowhere near as much as say as SUVs, which this isn't actually classed as. Weirdly, it's classed as a van or utility vehicle, even though it's neither. It's clearly an SUV. It's a bit of a shame that it's not classed as an SUV because I'd like to race this against some uh, modern SUV types, see what they're like. Nonetheless, here we are. Let's see what we're going to be choosing from. out there, we've still got loads of people braving the weather to watch this seasonal. I don't suppose that has anything to do with you, does it? No, not really. Uh, so yeah, we've got a Chevrolet Colorado uh, ZR2, Ford S uh, F-150 SVT Raptor, a Lamborghini LM002, uh, Mercedes-Benz E350D, uh, a Mini John Cooper Works Countryman, and a Ram 2500 Power Wagon. I think to start with, we'll go with a uh, classic, and uh, well, I say a classic, but a classic in my eyes because it's one of my uh, favourite vehicles that we've had on Forza games, and it's one I've liked for at least three years since, or well, whenever it came out. And uh, yeah, 308 horsepower from a three and a half, well, 3.6 litre V6 engine, which doesn't sound like much, but this car is far quicker than the uh, numbers ever uh, ever state, quite frankly, or, well, or at least it feels far quicker than ever any uh, of the stats state. Uh, it's not burdened with turbochargers or superchargers or anything like that, it's just a naturally aspirated V6 with a decent amount of power, decent amount of torque and uh, yeah, massive off-road capabilities. So yeah, as you will uh, see, loading times on the, this game are, are massively improved because we're now playing on the Xbox Series X, which I've already done a video about. I uh, would like to apologise for that video and the uh, moderate mods video quality of the that on those videos because yeah the 1080p but they were a bit blurry in, in areas because of the bit rate but that's because I didn't have a, my uh, editing software set up ready for my new game capture card because yeah, the new game capture card that I have does not have editing software included with it like the older one that I used to use had so I had to get used to some new editing software and didn't quite have the time because well it took forever to install this game on the uh, on the Series X, and uh, yeah, by the time it got installed and uh, I got all the settings set up and everything like that, it was a uh, high time to get some videos out. So uh, yeah, do apologise for that, but the quality will be, be better now. So I'm not used to the uh, new editing software. Uh, it's such a shame, really, that I can't record in 4K because then we'll be able to see how glorious this game looks on the Series X. But the loading times are better, the frame rate will be smoother. There shouldn't be any lag or anything like that, or any frame rate drops. So, uh, yeah, we've got all that going for us. And as you can see, despite only having 300 and a bit of horsepower, we're uh, keeping up with cars far more powerful than we are. Which is what I mean about this car having uh, far more acceleration and speed on the go than you'd expect for a car with weighing nearly uh, 5,000 pounds and only having 300. Six horsepower. Which is why it's one of my uh, favourite uh, American pickups in this game. Blows any expectations out of the water, quite frankly. Oh dear. But it does like to roll over, considering it has high ground clearance and a high centre of mass. Lamborghini has a road ahead. It's got more weight to it as well, which is probably why it's able to plough through these uh, this road furniture better than I am. Well, we're gonna have to set off a second, but that's still not a bad showing, considering it's one of the least fit powerful vehicles here. Yeah, second place is fairly decent. 
I would have liked that first place, but can't win everything. So yeah, the Lamborghini in first place there, uh, not by much, just over a second, but it clearly had the uh, extra kind of torque to get through all that debris and the like. Ram Power Wagon behind us, again, not by much, and then the Ford Raptor and another, well, a Land Rover Defender, which, yeah, has clearly been upgraded because you can't, they're not in C class originally. But nonetheless, let's get on to the uh, second race. Right, so the Chevrolet there giving us a solid second place, though uh, its lack of uh, proper torque uh, really screwed us over at the end there. Because, yeah, it's 275 on there, and as you can see, 369 in the Lamborghini, while over 450 horsepower. But obviously, it does have more weight, which, again, can sometimes help with uh, getting through uh, debris. So, uh, yeah, I think we're going to go for uh, the Mercedes. I don't think we've uh, used it yet so far. And, uh, yeah, it's got a pretty decent 3-litre, uh, uh, I think, V6 uh, diesel engine. And it's 258 horsepower, which is not even as much as the uh, Colorado there, but it's got 457 pounds-feet of torque doesn't weigh as much and it's uh, yeah pretty damn good in terms of handling and braking as well so let's uh, see what this Merc can do I really do like how uh, quick the loading times are right now uh, no we don't right, I've lost that last race but we have won several before now if you don't like the fact this car is in this colour or it's got all the uh, paraphernalia on the roof then you can change all of that if you wish. I've kept it on just to, uh, so it's recognisable uh, to people that might not know what this car is on this game. Or know it from another TV show or anything like that. Obviously it says it's been uh, in, uh, involved with Top Gear but I'm not sure whether or not that's either the magazine or the show. Yeah, either way, it's got a hell of a lot of torque, just like you'd expect from a uh, rather large um, diesel engine. Not the most amount of horsepower, but still reasonable. Didn't quite get up on that ramp there. Being a diesel, not the loudest of engines ever. But it's hardly whisper quiet either. It's easily one of the lighter cars here. Handling is a, a lot better. It's going to be on one of these SUVs or off-roaders or whatever. And it doesn't even have that higher uh, uh, ground clearance or centre of gravity either, so uh, yeah, it's not going to be rolling around in corners or anything. It's more like an ordinary car. Oh, again, we just miss it, just come short of that landing there not helpful in terms of uh, gaining our uh, the first place that we need. The uh, speed and the handling is favourable. Luckily at least we are landing flat and level on that other jump. really do like the fact that they put this uh, oh, yeah, missed a checkpoint. Which they did there. Uh, I really do like the fact that they put this car on the game. I know it's not the stock version of the uh, E350D, but it's still nice to have it on the game nonetheless. I just wish we had more estates uh, or more diesel powered engine uh, cars. But we've definitely seen an increase in the variety of powertrains and body styles on this game or previous Forza games. We landed it properly this time. I think we had a better angle. So we uh, went for the 
closer part of the road rather than the one for the part of it that was further away. It's helpful. So yeah, these were hardly the uh, highest of octane races in terms of speed. They are rather fun for the vehicles that we get to use. And Mercedes has come good by a substantial margin there. Despite not having the most amount of power out of a vehicle on this uh, series. So yeah, that gives us 20 points, puts us 6 points ahead of the Ram to Power Wagons. And uh, yeah, 10 points ahead of the Defender and uh, another 12 points ahead of another Power Wagon. So yeah, the Power Wagons seem to be the favourite cars to choose from here. Not sure why, because they are quite heavy and... Uh, not particularly powerful for the amount of weight that they are, but uh, nonetheless, let's get on to the third and final race. So the Mercedes there came through really rather good for us, so uh, yeah, let's see what else we're going to be choosing from. So yeah, this is a power wagon that is so popular in the uh, leaderboard at the moment. And as you can see, I don't know why, 410 horsepower for something that weighs more than 7,000 pounds really isn't all that much, to be honest. And uh, yeah, the acceleration ain't all that great either. I am tempted to be honest about the uh, John Cooper Works Countryman. I know I don't like the car and it isn't really all that great of a car in terms of its style and what a Mini should be. But there's no doubt in that it is the uh, least uh, in terms of weight but it is also the least in terms of power. But it's got a decent amount of torque and uh, yet yeah, the handling is really rather good. It's certainly better than the Power Wagon, the, uh, the uh, LM002, the Raptor. It's only the, really the Colorado and the Mercedes that match it so uh yeah not quite sure why it's in the off-road category because it's more of an suv or crossover but we're going to go for it nonetheless and see what it can do i like going for more unusual cars so uh yeah Let's see what the mini is capable of certainly might not like it in terms of its style and its uh, size but and certainly in terms of its weight because yeah it's far too big and heavy for a mini but yeah, there's no doubt in that it's a uh, Capable little, uh, I'll say little, capable car. Let's see how capable. We may well be six points ahead in the leaderboard, but that is not a comfortable lead. It's probably going to be the more capable one in terms of top speed. Despite the uh, lacking power, it's probably got the better gearing and the uh, more responsive engine. Because it's not wheel that much as well, it's probably a little bit better in that regard. We were, uh, we were rather flummoxed by that river bit then. fastest we've been so far on this series, surprisingly. Struggling to keep up with the lead pack, to be honest. I'll say that, we seem to be gaining a little bit. longer to go. Keep out of the deep end of the water, keep the speed up. Oh, the international there lost it a little bit. We also hit the rear end of them and slowed down. Me versus a Jeep. Come on. Well, the Mini has pulled it back from behind. Only in fifth place until the last 20 odd percent. And we've managed to uh, get into first. Despite having easily one of the least powerful engines, engines in the series. And uh, yeah, not being the most capable off roader, we've uh, managed to get into uh, first place. So, uh, yeah, that is surprising, and now we, uh, we win with a comfortable 12-point lead over second and third. 
and uh, yeah, 20 points ahead of fourth and fifth as well. So uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, pretty fun series to be honest. And uh, yeah, at the end of the day, it all contributes towards getting 50% on the festival playlist, which doesn't have much longer to go at the time of uh, loading this video. So yeah, yeah, get out there and get that 50% because you do get the GMC Typhoon that we were driving at the beginning of this episode. And uh, yeah, it's a cracking car. So uh, yeah, get out there and get that vehicle. And uh, yes, tell me how you. Uh, feel about the car and if you like it or not and uh, yeah nonetheless thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye